Microsoft wants to force you to have an account with them. New APUs coming from AMD and RIP to high-end Intel GPUs. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Tuesday, April 1st, 2025. And just saying up front, this is a non-April Fool's edition of hot news. I don't really like playing those games. I'm not gonna address anything that isn't actual news. I'm not gonna trick you with anything. So in case uh, you are looking to get away from all the nonsense that other companies are pulling on you, uh, that's that's what we're here for. But a little nonsense to engage in with before we get into the tech news. I just wanted to highlight that my uh, much more talented brother released his uh, band's brand new single. In case you're into, I don't know what this genre is called, metal chords, like poppy metal, kind of like in the vein of Bill Murray or the home team. That's kind of what uh, the type of music that they released. My brother wrote a lot of the music in the song. He also edited the music video, so you can check it out at the link in the video description in case uh, that floats your boat, but Microsoft doesn't want your boat floating on the river of local accounts. So they're making it more difficult for you to be able to bypass their login requirements that they have when you're installing a new version of Windows. One of the most common bypasses is called Bypass NRO that's used while you're trying to install Windows. That just allows you to get around having to have an internet connection and connect yourself to Microsoft servers at the end of it. So Microsoft saying that they are doing this to enhance security and user experience experience and that it ensures all users exit setup with internet connectivity and a Microsoft account. So this is not a bug. This is a feature. They absolutely want to do that. I will say that there are other methods of bypassing this. They're just slightly more complicated. They're not as simple as the bypass NRO. I'm not going to be discussing them at any sort of length here just because uh, anytime we've talked about like workarounds like that, YouTube tends to get really uh, finicky with us and we've gotten community guideline strikes for that kind of stuff previously. Obviously. So I'm not going to address it. Just know they exist. But I have to ask, why wouldn't you want to log into your Microsoft account, especially when they get you Windows Notepad with Copilot AI integration? You have to be online and have a Microsoft account to use that. Why don't you want that? Why? But I know that you likely want a high-end new GPU, but maybe you didn't get a 5090. But lucky for you, between NVIDIA and AMD, it feels like new cards are dropping every week. And with the help of today's sponsor, Jawa, upgrading is as easy as ever, even if you can't get the new new. I know for a fact you've heard me talk about Jawa before, but just in case you still don't know, Jawa is the absolute number one place to buy and sell PC components on the interwebs. Everything from individual components to ready-to-game pre-builds are waiting for you. Jawa themselves on being able to offer gamers exactly what they need and with security and privacy at the center of every transaction. Whether you're the buyer or the seller, all information is safe and secure, making for a convenient experience. Also, all listings you see on Jawa are reviewed by a real, live person so you know you're getting exactly what you see. As an even further level of insurance, certain sellers can be officially verified by Jawa, so when you purchase from them, you have an even greater level of trust. For instance, like when I was trying to get rid of that nasty old 4070 Ti I upgraded from last month. Jawa made it super easy. I just slapped in my GPU specs and I had Jawa throwing money my way. It seriously takes just a few minutes and I was well on my way to a better card or even a fully built PC. With prices so high and stock nowhere to be found elsewhere, Jawa is really coming in strong with pre-built and used cards. Jawa's trade and service also works the same for CPUs where you can either sell your component to Jawa to get some cold hard cash or trade it in towards another component you find on Jawa.gg. And as always, if you need PC help, suggestions on value or need to understand what your best upgrade is, Jawa's Discord is full of fellow PC enthusiasts ready to offer a helping hand. You can check out what an upgrade through Jawa can look like for you by exploring their trading program today. Use the link in the description to get started on your upgrade right now. Also, don't forget to use the code UFT10 for 10% off up to $10. Thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. But while the excitement of Jawa is there, I'm not necessarily excited to talk about this next article. We're sticking with Microsoft for a little bit, and that is that Copilot plus the designation that was given to the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Plus X Elite laptops that came out that have their AI processing. Those are all now being rolled out to AMD and Intel laptops as well. So the Windows 11 notebooks that have these processors can also get the Copilot plus moniker, which which means a whole lot, okay? Your GTX 2060 from over half a decade ago certainly can't run AI like these new little uh, Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs. They can't, they can't, they're 
really good at it. But in case you're on a 40 series or otherwise, game developers of brand new games that have been launching are advising that you don't go with the latest NVIDIA driver unless you're on the RTX 50 series. Both the developers of Inzoi and the first Berserker Kazan have announced that with the rollout of their games, which just happened, the RTX 50 series is great on the new drivers. The 40 series, don't you dare use the new drivers because that leads to instability, black screen issues, other stuttering and problems that people are experiencing on those 40 series cards. So you're gonna wanna use the driver from December of 2024 and the 30 series or prior, you can likely use the latest driver, but if you have any issues, you should definitely roll back to that December 2024 driver. So this is just kind of following with what we reported on last week where a lot of anecdotal evidence was coming out where people were struggling with the latest drivers on their 40 series cards, having all of these problems. And now game developers are concurring with that sentiment that yes, they're seeing it with their game players and that if you want to stay experience on a 4060 or otherwise, go back to December. That's when you need to have a driver from. But I'm looking forward to going into the future, Q4, maybe December of this year, because reports are that AMD is gearing up to launch their new Ryzen 9000G APUs. They're allegedly gonna be based on Strix Point, which is very similar to what we've been seeing in the mobile processors. Zen 5 CPUs, RDNA 3.5 graphics, all in a nice little chip. Now, reports are that this is likely to be Strix Point, but it's not clear if it's gonna be Strix Halo. I highly doubt it will be. Strix Halo being that thing that you can find in the ROG Flow Z13. You can check out our review of the Strix Halo chip right up there where we kind of benchmarked it and put it through its paces. It's it's a great little chip. I would love if it came as a socketable desktop situation, making it easy for people to have a high-end integrated great gaming solution while they wait for their new graphics card. That could really solve a lot of people's problems, but potentially it's just gonna come to something like the framework board that's releasing in Q3 of this year. And I don't know if Freeze is gonna release some deals. That man's not been feeling well, so let's see what he has for you. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I'm still kind of man down with the flu, but hey, we've got some deals for you. Starting us off today, we have the Native Union 10 foot sleeve lightning cable. If you're like me and you're still using a lightning iPhone, you can grab one for only $6.99, making it $28 off. Do not buy these things at full price. They're really nice cables, but $7, sure. <laughs> 30 something, no. But then next up we can grab this Razer Siren V3 mini USB condenser microphone for only $35.99 making it $24 off. And then lastly the Keychron Q7 70% hard swappable wired mechanical keyboard is going for only $74.99 making it a whole $125 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your heart news. Cheers. Well Reese, Elon Musk got a great deal when it comes to selling Twitter because he's finally been able to do that, offloading the social media company that he purchased for $44 billion and selling it to himself for $33 billion. That's right, XAI, Twitter AI, now owns Twitter. The AI company is now the overlord of the social media company with the private backroom deal happening where Elon Musk valued his company, the Twitter, at $45 billion, which is a billion more than what he acquired it for, but minus $12 billion in debt, thereby giving it a valuation of collectively $33 billion. So technically worth less, but actually worth more. And so this just makes it so that it's all combining the, the, the social media stuff that you have. It's gonna be rolled into the AI stuff that they're trying to develop and feeding the synergy of Elon's tech beast. Again, deal specifics are not clear. Both privately held companies, they don't have to divulge a whole lot of this. It's not clear who approved the transaction or who's getting compensated in the deal, but it did happen. And AMD did acquire a new company, ZT Systems, having their acquisition finalized for $4.9 billion. ZT Systems being data center integrators and engineers being able to roll out and scale AI cloud compute centers all across server places everywhere with AMD now getting 1,100 system engineers from this and them having a new class of end-to-end -end AI solutions based on a combination of AMD CPU, GPU, and networking silicon. So this looks to be part of AMD's strategy to keep up with NVIDIA's rollout of 
everything that they have in their AI stack, not just the Blackwell GPUs, but the server racks and working with companies to get them installed. AD is trying to keep pace with that. And HP trying to keep pace with the world of DIY PC components. HP obviously has their gaming brand of Omen where they've released laptops and desktop pre-builds before, but now they're looking to launch gaming components under the Omen brand. So it's starting with a select number of components right now. You've got Omen gaming fans, which just means they're RGB and hopefully high flow rate. They're also launching Omen power supplies, an Omen liquid CPU cooler of 240 to 360, and then an HP Omen hub that you can customize all of the aforementioned stuff, daisy chains, RGB, all of that good stuff. Let me know if you're interested in picking up any of the HP Omen products for an upcoming PC build. Do they strike your fancy? Is that something that you're looking to have their aesthetic or even HP in your next computer? Let me know. But I know a lot of you were waiting for news on Intel's high-end Battle Mage graphics cards. People have been anticipating, when are we gonna get details on the B770 or the B750? Something that's a little bit elevated above the $280 B580. Well, I've got bad news for you on that front with some Intel insiders revealing that they're dead in the water. High-end Battle Mage likely not going to be hitting store shelves at all. Now, you might remember that there were various rumors of other Battle Mage GPUs that were supposed to be hitting the scene, but it looks like those are supposed to be pro based cards that will have higher amounts of VRAM and be more geared toward workstation use cases rather than gamers. According to the Intel Insider, the G31 Battle Mage graphics card has been dead as of Q3 of last year. So anytime between July and September, the B770 died a death with the clarification being that this is the retail product of the G31. Allegedly, G31 might make its way into workstation station cards or something else, but the G31, at least in the desktop that you're gonna slap it in, allegedly not gonna happen. Now, the reports of Intel's GPUs death have been greatly over-exaggerated in the past. I don't know if we're facing a very similar situation here where potentially we still might see a release of them later on down the road, but at, according to all details and with how little information's been revealed over the last little bit, I wouldn't count on us getting a B770, something that launches for like four or 500 bucks, competes with the 5070 Ti and the 9070. It doesn't look like Intel's looking to compete in that section, at least with this generation. We might have to wait for Celestial in order for us to get that. And I got your comments on Friday's episode of Hot News, so let's go ahead and review those. Jared's Tech popping up in chat saying, hey, thanks, appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for being you and making great review content and uh, being one of the best when it comes to mobile notebook laptop reviews. And then Bear Taco saying, I'm loving the fact that Micro Center is showing stock of the overpriced NVIDIA cards. Consumers are finally waking up to the absurdity of the prices. I'm not sure that's necessarily true. That's one way to parse that information. The other way, which is how I parsed it in my mind, is that everybody who could afford those GPUs have purchased them. So all of the consumers who were inclined to it have been satiated with the amount of cards that they They've been able to get and now the consumers that are left are the people who weren't going to buy them in the first place my assumption is that nobody woke up uh this is just how it was always going to be and the people who wanted it already got it and the people who don't want it can't spend that amount of money on the graphics card so they're not going to then rinlock saying nintendo virtual card sounds like family sharing with extra steps yes Yes, but it's at least better than what they had previously. And then we got Oppenheimer saying, why did you say you had a 7900 XTX ASRock blower model and that you were gonna make a video with it if you're never doing it? We are, man. It took a long time for us to work on a review for the 9070 and 9070 XT GPUs. We did a lot of work for it. We re we benchmarked three different XTs. We have a 9070, we have the XTX, we have the 5070, we have 5080, we have the 7900 GRE. We're working out new processes with the UFD system. It takes a little while. Our, our benchmarker was working on this pretty much all of last week. So we this is this is in development. It's actually in editing right now and we're not we're not a, a tech channel where we can pop out all of these things quick quick. We're we we have a lot of other irons in the the brew. So just patience. Patience. The XTX blower style GPU is going to be featured in our 9070 XT review which should be coming going live 
Saturday. That's the current uh, prognostication of when that, that'll happen. Hopefully, um, if everything else goes well, we should have our ROG Flow Z13 uh, device review going live this weekend as well. We already have the chip review. We're reviewing the Z Flow as like a, a tablet slash laptop. And then um, we should also have our Ion Neo 3 review going out sometime soon. So we have we have a lot of stuff that's being worked on. It's just taking time. We, we're traveling internationally. That puts a little hamper on, you know, how quickly we can get stuff done. But uh, I'm gonna hamp that way. I don't know if that's a verb. I, I don't I don't like that I just I don't know what I said. I'll see you tomorrow.